This week on Lemons Car Spotting. Hey, it's Nick and Eric. It's time for more Lemons Car Spotting. Let's go. Do the thing. Oh, yeah. Man. Uh, yeah. I genuinely love the way that this car looks in profile. Uh, so. It's such a good shape. Yeah. Kudos to Backroads of Eastern Washington for getting it the good side of it. Um, just the way that it tapers from the roof line all the way down to the, the bumper. Totally perfect. Looks better in the, the coupe version, but uh, I'm not going to split hairs on there. This one's obviously lived a hard life. Uh, you rusted through in several places, uh, but uh, I love the wheel choice on these. Uh, I love the shape of them. And it's, you know, this is, if you wanted to build a lemons muscle car, you know, this is probably as close as you can get uh, at the moment, like a 75 Le Mans and, you know, put a, any old V8 in it. Yeah. Well, we've got one that is a regular racer. Yep. I feel like we haven't seen it in a couple of events out here in California, the E Lemonator, which is like a 75 Le Mans. It's big and yellow. It's one in IOE. Yep. Um, I think it's got an original Pontiac V8 in it. Um, it. It doesn't anymore, but yeah, they ran it with a 301 for years, which is <laughs> awesome. So. Yeah. Yeah. In this particular one, um, and those wheels are off of like a like an 80s Grand Am or something, which is amazing because like, yeah. you know, they were like, well, we got to keep it in the family. Yeah. Um, and we're going to add like, I mean, how does that even bolt up? But uh, yeah, I agree with you on the shape because this is just the GM whatever body, right? Like this is the same as like. I mean, what was the Chevy equivalent of this? Uh, well, the Chevy Concours was the same year, which I think maybe was Nova underpinnings, but I'm not totally sure on that. It might have been bigger than the Nova. It feels um, bigger, but not as big as a Caprice. So whatever. I mean, did they have a middle? Like, what was the Chevelle of this era? Was it, it just a, the Chevelle? They might have moved on to the Malibu at that point. I'm not yeah, sure. Right. But uh, Well, in any case, it's on the same chassis, but... Pontiac was able to make the car look very different just by yeah. sort of tapering the back end, um, you know, within the limitations of of that chassis. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, very successful, I'd say. Yeah. All right. Next up. Ah, <laughs> got ourselves a Chevy Sprint. <laughs> um now the Sprint, what did we decide a Sprint is? Oh, uh, is man. it a Suzuki? <laughs> I think we landed at it's a Suzuki. It might even be a Swift, uh, but yeah. you know, whatever the mid eighties. Oh, actually, Suzuki. you know, now I'm cheating and reading the, uh, the caption and it says it's a rebadged Suzuki cultus. Ah, well, there you go. Um, which I want to say there was something weird about that. So, you know, the Swift, then was replaced by the geo Metro in this market. And the Metro was a Suzuki Swift. I want to say there was something weird, like the Cultus and the Swift are not the same car. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it like was. That. Like there's yeah. something weird where you would think like, oh, yeah, these two things just go in parallel. And there was something in the middle there where they didn't. And there was a weird divergence. But anyway, obviously, it's a captive import Chevrolet badge, Suzuki underpinnings. Uh, you could get a turbo. God, could you get a turbo three cylinder in these? Yes, yeah. I think um, that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they all had that or if that was just the uh, the special version. But, um, yeah, it, it was obviously micro cars like this big in Japan briefly were a thing in the States. Um, they've kind of died out. I mean, the smallest car you can get now is like a Yaris, which is, um, you know, the size of the old Corolla now. So, right. um I don't know that there's much of a market anymore for really super tiny cars, but uh, I appreciate them for sure. It seems like people have hung on to metros for sure. Probably not the sprint so much, but you know, like there is a certain adherence to Supreme economy among a certain segment of the population, let's say. And uh you know, they have kept their metros in running condition, usually pretty rough, but, you know, like 450,000 miles. And if you are poking around, you can probably find a 400,000 mile Geo Metro to buy for a couple hundred bucks because 
they they were worth that 30 years ago and they are still worth pretty much the same so (laughs) indeed all right let's move on oh what what am i looking at I mean, is this a canoe? Is that, <laughs> uh, all right, Eric. See you later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you can't say something like that to me and then drop off because I have no idea what the hell this is or what a canoe is. But So uh, I feel like there is an upcoming EV brand, Canoe, uh, C-A-N-O-O, uh, that – is like kind of the classic <laughs> EV upstart where they have completely redefined redefined what a car can be. <sighs> um, which you know, in fairness, like you know, if you're an electric vehicle, the packaging becomes completely different. You right. don't need a transmission. You don't need a fuel tank. All of these things. If it's self driving, you don't even need a driver's seat. Like I don't know what it looks like on the inside of this thing. Like it could just be like an apartment. Um, and you get in and, and you, you know, you sit at the coffee table watching TV and then you show up a little while later at your destination, which, uh, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of backlash for EVs and self-driving cars among the real enthusiast community, but that sounds pretty good to me. I don't know. Yeah. If only they could do something like not give it a really stupid name, like canoe, um, you know, (laughs) maybe that would be part of it. I I also appreciate that it appears that they have rediscovered the 1989 Toyota Previa and made that the, uh, the basis of the, uh, the design. What it looks like is the Previa that was in the reboot of the National Lampoon's Vacation movie that was done up like the family truckster. It's got all kinds of extra weird stuff on it, but it's clearly a Previa underneath. That's uh, that, I think maybe that's <laughs> the real target they were going for with this. Oh, man. <laughs> well, it's in Chicago, and I should probably keep an eye out for it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next up, ah, not only uh, an El Caminoized vehicle, but an actual El Camino. Um, what is going on here? Because uh, this looks like some kind of a special package. It says Diablo on it. I have no idea if that oh. is a factory thing or like some coach builders aftermarket deal. Yeah. So the Diablo was a version of the GMC Caballero, <laughs> which is the GMC version of the El Camino. Right. <laughs> I I have this recollection of when I was a kid, I was with my buddy who lived up the street and we saw an El Camino and he, I swear to God, I mean, maybe, I don't know, it was like an inception situation or something, but he couldn't remember like, it's like, like, I can't remember what El Camino is called. Like, I think it's called an El Caballero. And then we looked and it was. Yeah. Was like, hey, what are we even looking at? Uh, I don't think it was El Caballero. I think it was just Caballero, GMC Caballero. Um, and then you could get the El the Caballero Diablo. Diablo. Oh, dude. <laughs> Which I guess got you this bumper with the totally sweet c4 corvette inspired taillights um yeah but this would have been before a c3 corvette i guess um well see i'm thinking that the i mean they continued to make this generation el camino into the 80s um so it's possible like if this was an 87 caballero diablo for That's the sake fair. of discussion it would have crossed over with the uh with the good old c4 corvette either that or this guy took his caballero diablo and took it to the next next level and yeah made it the caballero diablo gaucho i mean with his own personal touch <laughs> it's I a hell of a thing yeah, yeah i love uh the bed cover even i mean it's you can't see it, but I assume the interior is like white vinyl or leather yeah, or something like yeah. this is triple white. There's white inserts on the wheels. I think I'm seeing that, um, you know, this is uh, El Blanco, El Diablo uh, <laughs> getting work done. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as I, as I frequently pointed out um, the most, 
exotic car in my hometown when I was growing up was an El Camino of this generation. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. There was a lady up the street from me that had a Seattle, <laughs> which was probably <laughs> the most. <laughs> <exotic car. laughs> that that <laughs> took me way too long because I was like, well, I don't know what that is. Obviously, <laughs> I don't know what that is. She also had a Ferrari 308. The Seattle was for special occasions, and the 308 was uh, the daily driver. It was the horse. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next up. Oh. Uh, <laughs> speaking Southern of El Diablo. O- <laughs> Southern Ohio backroads absolutely crushing it this week. Uh, um man, from the El Diablo to the ah oh, geez, I don't even know what what you would call this, but I mean there's some serious mini truck elements, there's some serious muscle truck elements. You know, the classic flame job. It's got the visor. It has the roof spoiler over the B pillar blowout. I mean, the side skirts. Uh, this this guy was the king of his hometown in 1992. Oh, yeah. It's muy caliente for <laughs> <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, mini trucking. It's interesting. It'll be interesting to see whether there's any mini truck and nostalgia. I mean, I know that there is, but like fast forward another 10 years from now, like yeah. will anybody look fondly back upon this era? Um, Cause there is some cool stuff that's happening and some that looks super dated now, but um, you know, you never know things go in cycles. Yeah. Uh, we famously had an actual mini truck. Uh, there's of course the 808, the, the one that Jesse Cortez built with the small block yeah. Chevy, but there was another one that came to a bunch of oh, Pacific North right. West races. That's and right. It was a Datsun 720, and it was yeah. yellow with like this grid, like trapper keeper graphics all yeah. the way down the side. And they bought it that way. And they like, had bought it, was, it that way. It was and a they, survivor. Yeah. Yeah, and they just put a cage in it, and it was slow as balls but my god it, it looked awesome it looked so awesome it raced once as far as i know um so yeah so, that truck is still out there they gotta bring that baby back oh, i gotta look that up somebody bought it and raced it like twice more i was like man this thing hell is slow and i was like well put a motor in it like put yeah, something yeah, put else vq in, in that baby yeah <laughs> yeah a rev up 350z yeah oh man but yeah uh it was cool it might even have been a convertible conversion i don't remember it had something happening with it body wise that was not stock and i forget what that was like (laughs) one of those really great lemons cars that showed up like once or twice and you like you see that car and you're like oh man that thing's gonna be around forever and it's always gonna be awesome so yeah um, yeah somebody find it and bring it back is what i'm saying indeed all right final car of the week Oh, got ourselves a former racer here. <laughs> the, uh, good old first gen RX seven. Um, I mean, these are uh, we've seen a lot of these in lemons, and yeah. you know, rotaries talk about hit or miss. Yeah. Like sometimes they'll just run f- totally fine for for long periods in lemons, and sometimes yeah. they catch on fire and and explode immediately. Yeah. Who is to say which one yours will be? (laughs) Um, I I will say, because a common thing on these is to throw in a 4302, you know, some kind of swap. The rotary engines, rotary engined ones on balance, I think, have done better than anything with a V8 swap in Lemons. Yeah, it's about 50-50, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, neither one is really a slam dunk solution. No, no. But, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, otherwise, good suspension, uh, good parts availability, handle well, lightweight, um, pretty much, uh, uh, you know, as close to a slam dunk choice. There's nothing weird that's going to bite you aside from the rotary motor. Yeah. Um, obviously, there are a lot of these that were former race cars from other series, which is good and bad. It means that they're out there in sort of a pre-gutted condition. Um, as we always do, we warn you to uh, pay very close attention to the roll cage setup, make sure it meets Lemon's rules. Uh, but uh, yeah, a very good uh, starter vehicle for, for Lemon's. 
Yeah, uh, I don't know if you can see on the door, it says Pro 7, which uh, ah, yes. before there was Spec Miata, uh, yeah. Mazda had Pro 7. So it was a uh-huh. spec build on your first Gen yeah. RX-7. This one, if it ever had a cage, it's been cut out of it. So you could actually put a new cage in it. Right. Um, but yeah, it was, I mean, if you look at the numbers, uh, first Gen RX-7 weighs a about the same as a Miata makes about the same amount of horsepower. Um, kind of was the proto Miata. And there's a whole bunch of other racing series that existed briefly like that. There was a, an IMSA sponsored all Renault Le Car series. Yeah, in the that's right. 80s. Yeah. Um, and Alliance as well. And alliances too. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, there was a Dodge Neon like celebrity challenge race in Detroit. I mean, yep. all that stuff is out there. My favorite one I discovered was the Des Moines Grand Prix in 1991. <laughs> Had an all Geo Storm Pro Am uh, race. Uh, yeah, well, and the Dodge Daytona, <laughs> the Daytona. <laughs> you know, yeah. All these things are out there. I mean, uh, obviously, you need to look over the safety equipment and yep. bring them to Lemons, but they would be awesome Lemons cars, and we love seeing stuff like that. So, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, all right, I've got the hooptiest for this week. You know, I think that there are real pros and cons to people who have never made a car before making a car uh, because there are some <laughs> things that have just become tradition for no reason. And it's good to get a fresh set of eyes on the problem and, you know, new and interesting things will spin out of it. Occasionally you will get a situation where somebody who has never built a car before will decide (laughs) to do this. And it's just, Oh man, like, what are we even, come on, man. Like at least try to, well, whatever. In any case, the hooptiest is the canoe. If that is indeed what this is. Yeah. I mean, just, if you're going to do this, just call it the Dymaxion two and make it a Buckminster Fuller kind of deal and just go with it. Uh, You know, don't try and wrap an old idea as a new one and call yourselves innovative and then give it right. the dumbest name in human history. So, um, <laughs> you know, that does also remind me Homer Simpson built himself a car and he was a guy who had never made a car before. <laughs> true. And look what happened. There are a lot of parallels between that and what's happening now with some of the new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, lemons build. Well, uh, as much as we'd love to see a canoe in lemons, there's some hurdles involved in that. Um, you know, if you're dead set on, you know, going after the $50,000 all EV prize in a canoe, don't let me uh, dissuade you from that. But uh, a couple better options. You know, we've never seen a, pardon me, we've never had a Chevy Sprint that I know of in lemons. Would love to see one of those, but uh, I got to go with, you know, we love weird special edition, anything, especially when there's a aftermarket body kit involved in. Could you do any better than a Caballero Diablo Blanco? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> this is so good. Uh, it's excellent. And uh, yeah, if you look closely, it's got some, you know, teal color accents uh, around the wheels and the trim. Um, I mean, yeah, this is fully ready for the cover of, you know, custom something <laughs> 1992 magazine. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, obvious lemons car, obvious, you know, it got it's a G body. There's plenty of parts availability. Um you know, Travis Pastrana, this is what he races in lemons. Uh, yeah. and, and that guy is a pro. So, uh, you know, follow in his footsteps and build this into a race car. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, you, I don't know that anybody could do anything cooler than that. Uh, so, uh, if you find a Caballero Diablo on the street, make sure you take a picture of it and tag it. We'll probably talk about that because that's really awesome. But, uh, in the meantime, uh, find whatever you find. Come watch us. We'll talk about crappy cars. We'll see you next week. Man, that's straight out of Bitchin' Customs magazine. (laughs) The guy was the coolest guy for a period, and then he was not.